I'd like to talk about the communication between web-based components. Now, um, a, a web system is pretty much the same as any other system, except that inter interprocess communication or intercomponent communication is slow. It's a character-based, internet, message-based communication, which tends to be a bit slower than a within within machine uh, call return, or, or in a single process call return. Now this communication between components uh, is uh, very, it, it characterizes web-based systems and um, in some ways affects their design and their architecture. So it's worth having a look at. Now the, uh, there are three competing approaches. There is XML RPC, XML Remote Procedure Call. There is the REST architecture, represent, representational state transfer architecture or the messaging system and we have the SOAP. Um, originally it was the um, simple simple object access protocol that's what it originally was but it kind of expanded and went away from that whole idea of an object access protocol but it retained the name as you know good branding so it kept the name. The XML IPC uses HTTP post uh, it has a simple XML payload and uh, the results can be returned again across HTTP. So it's, it's very simple and straightforward. REST, um, request, use, HTTP, get and post, and put and delete. Um, and parameters are encoded within HTTP, and it's fairly free form, as we'll have a look at soon. SOAP is um, a much more defined um, messaging system. It has um, I mean, you, with, with a SOAP system, you have to define the message, you have to define your interface, you have to define a whole a bunch of stuff. And I gather from um, the various comments that it's not exactly straightforward and simple, um, but it has its advantages. Now, the basic concept is that on, on the internet, you can send a message and get a message back. All right, so you can send a request, so you post a request to an address. Uh, that's an IP address, uh, and you enclose the request in uh, XML tags, and the, the request itself is uh, written up in some uh, XML format, so that you can then identify things and, and strip things out. Um, this would enable you to have a certain amount of flexibility about exactly which parameters you had or didn't have. So it's, 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 a, uh, it's, it's not a positional um, parameter based system. So it allows a great deal of flexibility and a great deal of robustness. Now the return response uh, simply puts uh, everything within the uh, message body uh, again as the XML uh, markup. Now why is this interesting? Well it's interesting because arbitrarily complex things can be built using XML and it's still an XML message so you can still send it across there as a complete packet. XML is computer readable and it's also human readable. Um, not quite bedtime story human readable, but certainly readable. Uh, existing HTTP service can handle this traffic. There was no specific encoding needed. It was a very, very much a character based uh, system and it could be simply accommodated on the existing HTTP with no chains. So that made it, um, you know, it was basically economically easy to implement. Now looks, we'll look at XML RPC. Uh, this is a remote procedure call. So a URM, URI is simply an entry point to a set of methods provided by a service. So the, the remote procedure call goes to a URI and that's the entry point to a, a, a service or a set of services, um, set of methods that provide the service. The request body conforms to the XML format and the parameters are passed in order, in sequence. Now the response also conforms to a simple standardized XML format. So this is very simple and straightforward. REST is a representational, representational state transfer. And the whole idea is that given that the internet itself is stateless, we want to be able to transfer the state with it, with our message, right? with our request. 
The term was coined by Roy, Roy Fielding in about uh, 2000. Uh, it does refer to the fact that HTTP, that, yeah, HTTP is fundamentally stateless, so every transaction carries its state with it. And the focus is on the resources and the interface. The request goes to an interface to access the resources that are available through that interface. REST services are accessed as resources, as I said. Uh, GET reads data and only reads data. It doesn't do anything else. It, it just gets data. POST modifies data. Um, there are two other commands, I believe. There's a PUT and there's a DELETE. REST has no standardized XML format, although specific forms are starting to appear. Um, when, when you have no specific format, it means that the receiving end of things, um, yeah, you, you have to know what the receiving end is expecting in order to be able to provide it. Um, now, this is okay when you, when you have that opportunity to do that, but as the internet is providing uh, general public services, then there is a need to standardize the, um, the message contents and sequence and things like that. So there are some standards that are arising uh, to do that. Now the nice thing about REST is that it can use the existing web services for authentication and authorization. SOAP, by contrast, is a complex set of specifications which at the time of writing is still evolving. Um, most of them do. HTTP, HTTP is only a transport, so so far as HTTP is concerned, the SOAP message might as well be um, uh, fully enclosed in, in an envelope and not visible. Now that matters, uh, we'll see in a moment. The emphasis is on typing and service definition. So this is where you have web services definition language and you have uh, web, services de def web services directory uh, or universal UDDI um, where you can look up a service and what it requires, what its parameters are and what kind of thing you get back. That, that, so you get this definition of it all. This, the um, messages are commonly generated by higher level tools, uh, for example, .NET and web services. Um, they appear to be not the kind of thing you sit around and just keep in by hand. Now, WSL, Web Service Definition Language, describes services like a um, uh, interface definition language for SOAP. All right? So there is this big dictionary, or this whole idea of a dictionary of uh, services. UDDI supports registration and discovery of services. So UDDI is the um, uh, directory, the, the directory for wisdom services. Okay, uh, so you kind of need that. Um, now that pretty much parallels um, uh, the domain name servers. Um, there, there is a the server keeps the keeps track of all, all, all the names on the domain or access to them. And um, UDDI is trying to encourage a general uh, market of web services that are available. Now there are arguments for and against um, each of these different uh, ones. And uh, so I tried to summarize them all on that uh, slide you can see there. And uh, I'll try briefly to, um, to describe uh, the main differences. So with the services, RPC is a request and receive information. Right? REST is get, post, put, and delete. And so the, the application defines this is exactly what happens. So you're not, you're not constrained to those four commands only. Um, however, you can do an awful lot with those four commands. Now the advantages of, of RPC is it's simple. It allows complex data structures to be transmitted, processed, and returned. REST has the advantage that it's lightweight. There's not a lot of extra XML markup. It is human readable, and that's considered an advantage. I guess you could say the same for all of them. SOAP is uh, easy to consume, sometimes is a comment, uh, but it is rigid, so you get uh, strong type checking. Now that you can consider to be an advantage or not, but it, it's a characteristic of it, and uh, we'll, at the moment we'll just talk it as an advantage. Now, so far as standards are concerned, SOAP does define standards for its messages, uh, whereas neither REST nor XML do. And um, 
so you could consider that to be both good or bad. Some people think it's good because you, you have a great deal of freedom to do what you want. Other people think it's bad because it means that um, nothing is, is fixed and defined and you don't you, you then have trouble with um, commonality. So far as bandwidth usage is uh, concerned, both uh, RPC and REST are fairly light on the uh, bandwidth, whereas uh, SOAP is fairly heavy. Uh, there have been some comments that, that SOAP messages are very verbose, up to about nine times as, as big as an equivalent REST message would be. So in summary, there are three different ways, three different methods of communicating between um, web service or web system components. There's XML RPC, there's REST, and there's SOAP. Um, the markup, sorry, the, the usage of this within the community is, as you can see there, uh, REST dominates, and SOAP is significant, and then it's kind of the REST.